Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Let's continue building the 650 scale Enterprise D. Welcome back to the channel where we are building two 650 scale Galaxy class starships. One is going to be the Enterprise D, the other is going to have a custom name and registry as per the request of the customer. In the previous update, I started to do preparation work on the saucer sections and started to clear out some of the existing resin in the phaser array so that we can replace it with clear for our own lighting effect. I'm going to be continuing that work in this update. Hopefully we get all four saucer parts fully prepared for that lighting effect with the clear resin. Now the decals also came into the shop just recently along with the metal plate for the armature. So we're gonna take a deep dive into looking at those decals. We'll see what I'm gonna do about the decals for this project. We also do need to create some custom ones for the custom name and registry. So that's gonna be quite interesting to look at. Now we have like, 2,102 subscribers right now, that is fantastic. But what's even more exciting is that we are so close, only about 200 watch hours away from full ad revenue monetization on the channel, which will be very helpful in preparing for my trip to Wonderfest. So if you'd like to help out the channel in a unique way, you can take any of my playlists and play them while you're doing other things in the background. And that would really help me reach that uh, requirement for watch hours before Wonderfest, and that would be fantastic. So let's get right to building. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're there, click on the notification bell so you don't miss a single update. If you're interested in purchasing a Tesla and would like to support this channel, you can find a referral link in the link section of my YouTube page. So since you last saw this part, I have gone through and filled in the rest of these areas for the first round sections of the phaser array. So what I'm going to be doing next is getting this outside and getting these connecting sections cleared out so that those can be filled in with the clear resin. Um, I think it was a really smart idea to do these smaller sections rather than the bigger ones because it was a lot easier to pour the resin. It takes longer but allows you to have a bit more of a flat section. And leaving these connecting sections just maintained that structural integrity. I didn't want this area breaking under the weight of the entire middle section of the saucer. So I'm going to get this outside today. It's a really nice day. It's supposed to go up to plus 15 degrees today. Uh, so I'll get this out on a table outside, keep all that dirty, grindy work out there and get these sections cleaned out so I can start pouring the resin in those sections. And since that first saucer top is done on those first round areas, I've moved on to getting the uh, resin filled in on two more of the saucer parts, one bottom and then the other top. I still have to actually drill out or grind out these sections on the last saucer bottom. So these are kind of perch precariously because uh, it's a bit of a challenge to get these to sit flat over here. You can see that there was a little bit of uh, run on the epoxy and that's because maybe the section was either overfilled a little bit too much or didn't quite sit flat. One of those two things, but uh, we can take care of that. No problem. That's not going to be an issue when we get doing the uh, phaser array on there. So moving on quite nicely. Here we go. I have cleaned out the remaining support material. And you can see how those have been cleaned out and that's ready to pour resin. And this has turned out really well as far as maintaining that structural integrity of the part. You always hope that your plan's gonna work out and it's always thrilling when it actually does because I've never seen anybody do this. This is the first time. So uh, it was a little bit of a, of a think it through type of thing and hope it works out. And it actually worked out. So really happy with that. So. I'm going to be spending a fair bit of time getting uh, resin filled in, not just on this, but on the other three saucer halves that I've got to do uh, the initial work uh, continuing on. So that'll be a little bit of time to get that done. So for the first of the two saucers, the entire phaser array is now been replaced with clear resin. And I know it looks a little patchy, but that's simply because of the method that we had to use. It would look a whole lot nicer if I could have poured the entire ring in one go, 
But if you do that because of the angling of the part, the slope here, you'd have resin running all over the place. So I had to do it in these smaller sections, but that doesn't really matter because we have the part that's going to go on top of this once it's all said and done. So I'm not gonna have to worry about the finish on here. I just made sure that I kept the opening within the confines of the piece that goes over top. Now there are some sections where some resin seemed to escape the tape. And so I will probably go over this and give it a light sand in some of those areas and possibly a polish after that's done. I might just do that over the entire thing. Um, but we are looking really, really good on this phaser array. I'm really happy that it's turned out the way that it did, um, given that I've never done this before and wasn't quite sure how it would turn out. I hoped that it would turn out really well, and it has turned out really well, but when you're in the midst of figuring everything out, you're never quite sure how things are actually going to turn out once you've done them. So we've got a little bit of an issue with the poured resin on this part. Two spots, the resin escaped the tape. So you can see here we had quite a bit of a blowout here and a smaller one over here. I uh, haven't taken the tape off of this one yet, but you can see how it spilled out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup before I continue. Uh, let's see, this one is filled in, this one is not. So I've got two, four, five spots left on this one to do, but I'm gonna need to get this cleaned up before we move on. So what I'm gonna have to do is sand this down. Now the clear resin is a little bit softer than the uh, printed resin, so that should help me out on that. So I'll just go through, sand this off, sand this area off, get that smoothed out before moving on to the rest of the spots. But we're getting close to getting the phaser arrays fully filled in so that we can move on on this project. And while I'm getting that mess cleaned up, let's look at decals. So you might be saying to yourself, Andrew, why are you worrying about decals now when you barely started building the thing? And that would be a very good question. Thanks, John. I mentioned earlier in this update that I will have one Enterprise D, but the other one will be a custom name and a custom registry. So I need to create the artwork for that custom registry and name. And it's not just the big pennants that go on the front of the saucer. There are other areas where the name appears in some of the other artwork where that will have to be reproduced with the proper name and registry. Now we're going to take a look at the decals that we got and we're going to talk a little bit more about what I'm going to be doing with those as well. Here are the decals that have been provided to me by the manufacturer of the kit. Now if you're to order their decal set this is not what you get. Their default decal set has all of the Aztecs with these markings all built in in one piece. The intention is that you would lay that over the lightly colored surface and that would give you all of the markings that you need along with your Aztecs. I am painting the paneling and Aztecing on these ships so I required all of these markings separate. So they were uh, quite accommodating in providing me just the markings without the Aztecs. However, unfortunately I am not going to be able to use these physical decals. Um, they are printed on an inkjet printer without the capacity for white ink or white toner. So that causes a couple of problems for me. One, if I put this red or the yellow down on top of the Aztec details, then any areas where there is the darker shade, this coloring is going to kind of be absorbed by that under base coloring and it won't look right. These vibrant reds will not pop the way that they should. Um, so in order for that to happen, they need to be backed in white. Some of these areas that are supposed to be white, uh, they've substituted kind of a beige color here or just altered the color altogether. Uh, and I do want those areas that are supposed to be white to be white, uh, such as the white areas on the deltas, the space between the dark blue and the red pinstripe on the registry, the three and the two for the shuttle bay markings should also be in white. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to redo all of the artwork for it. One, that's going to allow me to have these printed with white toner. Uh, the person that I am talking to about that right now, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to uh, under print all of these decals in white first. Um, that's a great process because then it's a blocker between your paint surface and the coloring and allows the coloring to pop really well. So I'm not sure if a white undercoat is going to be possible yet or not, but I do at least want there to be white 
where there is supposed to be white. So I'm going to redo all the artwork and have that printed. Um, that solves a couple other issues. One, I do have custom names and registries to do, and so I will just do the artwork for that, and that'll be part of the print. The other thing is that the uh, quality of print on here isn't quite what I'm looking for. This was done on an inkjet printer, and when you look closely, you can see all the little dots that make up the uh, image, and that's just the nature of an inkjet printer. So we're going to, I'm going to redo, I'm going to get on the computer, redo all the artwork. We're going to look at having these printed professionally with white toner. Um, and I think that that's going to give us a much better end result. And because I am who I am, I'm also going to go through and make sure that all of the escape pods are individually numbered. Uh, just a tiny, tiny detail, but I think that makes more sense. Uh, I know on the actual studio model, the numbers are repeated all over the place because they just did up like a set and then repeated them, uh, which is exactly what's been done here. That's accurate to the studio model, but I want it to be more accurate to what it would be in universe. So we're gonna sit down at the computer and get some of that work done. Here we are at the computer. I've gone ahead and scanned the decals and imported them into Inkscape. Inkscape is open source, free to use vectoring software that is free for anyone to download and use, which is fantastic. So the decals are in here as a base layer, and I'm going to be drawing new artwork on top of the image here. I've gone ahead and I've done some of it, and if I unmute this channel, you'll be able to see that I've worked on the registry and this pendant here. I am going to zoom in to the registry, and you can see how nice, crisp, and clear that is. If I turn off my new artwork layer, you'll see this scanned image underneath. Now you may notice that the scanned decals don't have serifs on this D. However, on the studio model, the D has serifs. The default fonts that you can find online that would look like the registry fonts, none of them have this serif on the D. So thank you to Wayne Smith, who through one of the Facebook groups I'm part of was able to get me the font that has this. Now it doesn't have any of the pinstripes around, so what I did was I individually created each of these letters in another free open source program called GIMP. GIMP is the free open source equivalent of Photoshop. And through that, I created this multiple strokes around. This is actually a white layer here between the dark blue and the red because we are gonna be printing with white toner on these. So that has to be there. I'm going to back out here a little bit. You can see how nicely this pennant looks. Uh, here, I'll turn off again, just so you can see the difference in the image quality there. Now let's take a look at the escape hatch panels here. These uh, are not quite the right color as per the studio model. So I've done some work on these and I've recreated uh, the escape pod hatch and I've changed up the color scheme and I've also uh, dealt with some of these details and looked at individually numbering all of the escape pods and I've got a file open here ready to go. And this is essentially just a page full of escape pod hatches. I'm gonna zoom into this one up here, which is 001. You can see that this has the custom name for the other ship. And all of these uh, all along here have different numbers on them. And uh, there are about 450 escape pod hatches on the Galaxy class ship. So we're gonna have one for every single number. So this sheet of decals here goes all the way up to 300 and something, and then I've got another, another sheet with uh, another few rows of them. So that is what we are doing with the decals. This is gonna take me a, a while to get all this artwork done, and then I need to make sure that it is formatted uh, and ready to go for the person who's gonna be printing these um, so that that is as easy as possible for them. And I think that by putting in this extra work, it's just going to make everything look so much nicer on the final product. And now back to the kit. You probably thought I'd bring you back and it would all be done. Well, no, it's not. I want to show you what I've been doing. First of all, I scraped down this big area with this blade and I've made it thin enough that I can now I don't want to block the camera too much, but I can now get my blade underneath here and slowly pull the rest of this resin 
up because I want to have as clean of a surface as I can. Now this part of it's going to be a really slow job. That's why I've, I've thinned it down as much as I can. I'm just going to event slowly pull this softer resin off of the kit. And that's just going to take some time. I'm going to do that as much as I can. Now, unfortunately, it may end up pulling the resin out of this plug here, out of this hole. But if it, if it does, I will just go back and refill. So I'm just going to sit here and continue to pull this resin off of the surface. Finally, all the phaser arrays are filled in and they're looking pretty good. Now, the other two saucer parts are sitting off on another table because they've just recently been poured and I want them to cure for a couple of days before I remove the tape. Otherwise, I risk pulling the resin out from the areas that they've been filled. But they're looking really, really good. Um, I might go th over this with a light sand just to smooth out like a couple of spots where there's a little bit still on the edge, but nothing too major to deal with there. But this is a huge step forward on the project. And I think that the phaser effect, given how we've done this, is going to look so good. And that's going to wrap things up for this update on the two 650 scale Enterprise D projects. I am happy with the work that got done, even though it just takes a lot of time at this point in the build. The phaser rays on the saucer have been cleared out, filled in with the resin. That is great. We got some work started on the decal artwork. I'm excited to see how that turns out once it's all done. That's going to take a little while for me to do. I'll show you some more updates on that during the next few uh, videos. In the next update, we're going to be working on filling the windows. I'm not sure how much of that will make it into the video because it might just be repetitive work. Maybe a time lapse, maybe some lives, we'll see. But I'm excited to be moving on. So I hope that you've enjoyed this update. If you did, please make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. Remember, you could help me reach that uh, watch time I need for full ad revenue monetization if you would be so kind as to play a couple of my playlists. That would be so wonderful. But for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.